Now, if you ask somebody, why do you drink alcohol? The instant answer is that it's more fun at parties when I'm hanging out with people. I'm more confident, I'm more charismatic. It's just overall a better time. I'm laughing, I'm enjoying myself. I'm just having fun, bro. That's it. No scientific reasoning, no, no betterment, no better for your life, for your family, for society, for those around you. No, I don't want to poison my body. I'm just, I'm just having a good time. It's purely an emotional choice. There's nothing good about it for you. Now, people take the argument saying that it makes you more charismatic. It makes you more confident. I'm dancing in public. I'm having a good time. I'm picking up girls' phone numbers. I'm having a great time with all my boys. But you don't realize that you're depending on poison to make you a better person. Let's just try to rationally conceptualize what I just said right now. You're depending on drinking poison, in intoxicating your own body uh, to be more confident and more charismatic and to go pick up girls, for an example, at the bar. Now, if you're depending on something, especially something that's, that's literally destroying your body at every given level, that it's increasing the risk of cancer in your body so that you can go be charismatic and confident in front of other people, you don't need alcohol, you need a therapist, you need help. You're, you're poisoning your own body just to have a temporary good time. We, we know that this is horrible for you. Science has been proving this over and over again. A matter of fact, the old science, uh, previous to what's coming out right now recently, the old science was saying that, yeah, you know, a little bit here and there in moderation is fine. Everything in moderation is okay. Don't worry about it. One drink's not going to kill you. And that's what everyone tells you. But there's no level, lo logically, rationally speaking, there's no level of poison that's good for you. It's common sense. One cigarette isn't good for you. One glass of beer isn't good for you. It's so, so common. We don't have to look too deep into the science to figure this out, but if you want to, we can go ahead and do so. The American Cancer Society says that there's no safe level of alcohol. In a recent study, they also said that alcohol has a cancer-causing compound called ethanol in it. Whether it be beer or wine or liquor, they're not any more safe than each other because they all contain ethanol in it. And even having less than one glass or one little drink per day um, is, is actually still going to increase the risk of certain types of cancer being caused in your body from just drinking alcohol. Now, we can look past the science, we can look past everything, just coming back down to a moral standing and a regular, a regular person's logical thought. We know for a fact that it's not good for you. We know for a fact that if you're depending on anything to be a better person in life, as long as it's not prescribed by a doctor, for an example, you have a very serious, specific medical condition for the average person, for the layman, drinking alcohol to be more out and open and break out of your shell, you have to do that by yourself. If you want to be more confident, put yourself in those confident situations. Talk to people like you're confident. Go up to a group of people and just speak and talk and join the conversation. Instead of having to rely on alcohol or a drink or anything else to be more confident of, of a person temporarily, and then when it wears off, you're hungover and you're throwing up and your body is telling you, why did you do that to me? Instead of doing all of that, you can easily just not drink. Right? Yeah, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable talking to that girl at the bar without having any alcohol in your system, but it's going to make you a stronger person permanently, forever, for the rest of your entire life, not only while you're drunk, but for tomorrow morning when you're not hungover and for the rest of your entire life because you've developed those skills as a person. It's a cheat code. It's a social crutch. It's a shortcut. Put simply, that's it. Now, I'm going to be getting a lot of pushback for what I just said, and the reason for that is because it's so socially acceptable to drink alcohol. Now, we know that scientifically it's bad for you. We know that with logic and rational, it's, it's bad for you. It's not a good idea. Um, and we know, we know that even philosophically, it's just a stupid thing to do. But the pushback is going to come from how it's been normalized forever. Now, when the U.S. tried to ban alcohol with prohibition, which was constitutionally banning the importation or sale or the use of alcohol whatsoever, people were flooding the streets with alcohol. Everyone had it. It was speakeasies. Everyone was just throwing around alcohol left and right. It's because it's so normalized. It, everyone has been so addicted to it that when you just pull the plug on it and say, hold up, we, we kind of realize this is actually bad for us and we shouldn't be doing this to our people. When you pull the plug on it, everyone will go nuts. Everyone will go crazy. It's like saying, no more cigarettes. All the cigarette smokers will be going crazy outside of each gas station and protesting and putting up their pitchforks and knives. And it's because they are already addicted to it. So that's obviously not the solution. It has to come from a person-by-person -person basis. Um, obviously, there's more that we can do as a country, as a society, but we know that culturally, it's impacted us deeply. For an example, when the one virus that happened like three years, wow, well, it was three years, yeah, yeah, three years ago, when that one virus came out and everyone was going crazy and tripping out, like, oh my God, to sit inside my house, or I can't be going out in public and making out with people. Oh my God, what should I do? People were drinking alcohol at record numbers. I think the, the increase of death of alcohol related death was up by 25% in that year alone. When there was a global pandemic, people were just drinking all day long, 25% jump in one year. 
I don't think it's been that bad. I think I read a, star, um, a study that said it was the last 50 years it ever got that bad. And that was just from a pandemic because people don't know. And that, that honestly says a lot more about us as, as a society, as culture, as people, that when we're, we're caused with calamity and struggle and problems, instead of trying to find a solution for it, instead of seeking help, instead of seeking a professional, instead of bringing our family together and just holding it down and having a good time with each other and playing board games or reading books or just being good people in general with each other and socializing naturally and healthily, and healthy, uh, instead what we do is we uh, go to our room and we drink alcohol because we rely on that to numb the pain instead of having to fight through these things and feel uncomfortable naturally, which is how we should be doing it. Instead, numbing the pain is just such an easy option. Why would you ever want to go work hard or talk to people or be more charismatic and train yourself to be more social and a better speaker in public and do all these good things for yourself, which are permanent skills that you can teach to your kids and the rest of society forever? Instead, just take a shot, bro. Make the pain go away. Have fun for a little bit. And then you get hungover and drunk. You feel like throwing up the very, very next morning, with it, which is the worst headache ever. I never drank before in my life. Thankfully, I will never, ever drink in my entire life because I see no logical reason for it. Now, for an example, people make the argument all the time, like about, for example, like viewing pornography. We know that it's a horrible thing for you. Science and studies show that it's a horrible thing for you, even though there's not much science of it because people aren't funding those kinds of studies. We still know that it's bad for you. Logically and rationally speaking, morally standing, we know that it's horrible. But the reason that people get into something like this is because not only are they exposed for it, but naturally they have a desire to view something like this. Now, if you're a 13-year-old boy, you're on Instagram or whatever, you're on the, the computer playing video games and you see an ad pop up, which is a naked girl, you're obviously going to be intrigued because naturally that's something that you would want to see. You want to see like, oh my, I never saw that before in my life and your whole world is exploding right in front of you because it's the first time you've saw a naked person. Naturally, that's something that we want. Now, for an example, if the same 13-year-old boy um, is sitting down and there's a glass of water and a glass of alcohol, why would he ever pick up the glass of alcohol? There's no reason for, for doing that. It tastes horrible. He's probably going to throw up after drinking it. It's going to burn his throat. And it's just, it just not good. Like, why would he do something like that logically and rationally? Even emotionally, there's no point. Now, if all of his friends are all sitting in a circle, they're all getting drunk, they're all smoking weed, they're all smoking cigarettes, they're all drinking alcohol, or he's on TikTok, and we see that there's a big, big increase on people binge drinking and doing hard drugs on TikTok, which is what their AI is actually promoting to the rest of the world, except China, which is where it was made. I have a whole video on that above. Then the chances of him smoking that first joint or lighting up that first cigarette, or drinking that first sip of alcohol and poisoning his own body is increased tenfold because now he has an actual motivation to do it. And that motivation is purely external. It's not internal. There's no deep desire, natural longing, uh, intrinsic need to, to want to go and drink alcohol or to light up a joint and just to smoke it for no reason or to light up a cigarette for the first time. There, there's no need. Why would I do that? It's pointless. But when all the friends are doing it, when all of the social media is doing it, when TikTok is doing it, when it's on TV, when it's normalized as a society, we, us, us doing it just as normal people, even if it's only to myself and I'm going to do my own thing, which is what all these like, these like liberals say, <clears throat> is that uh, I'm just going to do me, bro. Leave me alone. Yeah, totally fine. Do you. But you don't realize that what you do is what everyone else will do around you. You being drunk, you you drinking in public, you even walking outside the house even somewhat like your breath smells like alcohol, that's going to increase somebody else's chances of drinking and hurting themselves as well. So the way that you live your life is the way that you influence others to live theirs as well, which is why it's so important that if you have a few followers on social media or on Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok, that if you say something that's stupid, that's bad, that's showing people the wrong path in life, you're responsible for everyone's actions because you've taught them to do this. Even you smoking weed online or you drinking alcohol online, like which is why I see all of these Twitch streamers doing because they have no personality for themselves. So they go on a live stream on Twitch, they start drinking to make themselves more charismatic and funny because naturally they don't have any of that funny or money. They got their money down and their funny down. It's nothing whatsoever. So they rely on this to be funnier people, to get more views, to get more clicks. Everyone laughs at them. Yeah, it's so funny and everything. And technically, technically speaking, the only person getting drunk and poisoning their body is them. But how about the 5,000 kids that, that are watching them do it as they get half naked and start drinking, right? Those kids are going to be more, are, are much more likely of drinking that drink because they see somebody else doing it. And it looks like it's so much fun because we're pushing that to the rest of people as a society. So the way that you live your life is the way that people around you will live theirs. And that can go on forever. So lead by example. Be a good person. Lead by your own example and live a life. Even when nobody is watching, be a good person for yourself. And don't harm yourself even just because it's it's me and let, let me have fun, bro. Let, let me live my life. 
Let me just live based off of purely off of emotion and put logic and rationale to the side because that's boring and who really cares? That's what it all comes down to. And that's the true issue that I find with alcohol or any other drug in general. Thank you for watching this video. That was my stance on alcohol. We can continue the conversation in my Discord server as a uh, chat called Intellectual Discussions where we have debates like this all the time. So if you want to give your stance, even if it's opposing to my stance, absolutely come through and share your side of the argument. I would love to hear it. Thank you for watching this video. Stay dreaming. Stay lucid. I'm out. Peace.